hope everybody uh, out there that's a father had a good Father's Day and uh, everything's going well. But I want to run a little scenario uh, with, with you guys. Uh, so you're out, you go out and get your boat, it's cranking and cranking but it won't fire over. So what do you do? You start checking, okay it's cranking but uh, maybe you're not getting spark or maybe you're not getting fuel or thousand other things so today I'm gonna kind of run through something that happened to me and uh, hopefully it helps you guys out okay today we're working on uh, this is a 1977 55 horse Johnson so I got a call from a buddy I said hey my pontoon broke down can you come give me a tow I had the John boat in the water already so I said sure you know so I run down to the dock go fight Go to try to fire up the boat and it just cranks and cranks nothing so i checked the primer bulb on the fuel tank i prime it up yeah it's it's got fuel in there okay so crank a little bit more nothing not you know try a little uh, starting fluid or something nothing no not even popping so uh well it seems like it doesn't have any spark but i gotta verify that so i run back home get uh get some tools and i've got one of these this is a inline inline uh, spark checker so this is kind of how you put it in there hook that back up and uh, since i was by myself you can't really crank the engine over and and stare to see if that little light flashes so what i did was uh you know just turn my key to the on position so you know you're getting power back there and then i got the starter button so you hook this up to your starter you can push the button watch that okay no spark so i didn't have spark on either. you got to check both of them of course or uh, this is a two cylinder so check every cylinder but uh on whatever model you're working on but didn't have spark on either one so okay maybe i got uh power pack issue maybe the stator winding something going on with that so okay so I did some troubleshooting, ended up finding out that my stator had an issue. Um, and I can show you how I did that um, with my meter. Um, but what I'm going to do just to make it easier is I'm going to pull the flywheel off and then I'll pull the wires out so you can actually see the stator windings and everything. And uh, during this time too when I was pulling some wires off, I found my voltage rectifier, the regulator, some bare wires back in there. And somebody had put some silicone or something on it at one time. Um, so I'm going to replace this also because this could also really be the root cause of what happened with that uh, stator. But um, we'll go in a little bit more detail on testing and everything. So to get access at that flywheel, um, you can use a polar tool like this where three bolts will thread into the flywheel, your center... Um, pushing bolt will go in the middle and it'll pop that pop that uh, flywheel right off another way I've done it um, and I'll kind of show you is you loosen this uh, top nut and you'll you loosen it all the way off and then thread it back down till it's flush with the, the bolt in there or the, actually it's the crankshaft uh, but you'll run those threads down and then you get up under the flywheel kind of see where it's sitting there and then off the engine so you're going to push down and have some pressure lifting on the uh, flywheel and then just smack it with a hammer a couple times don't go too crazy with it because you can damage the nut or other things um, these engines have basically roller bearings so there's not like a thrust face um, kind of like a car engine so you don't you don't have to be as concerned with uh, you know, damaging bearings or something, but you still got to be pretty cautious. You know, Obviously, use the puller if you got it. You can borrow one, you can rent one, um, but if you're in real bad jam, you can do that trick. So um, Then after that, this is a, a, a tapered crankshaft, and it is, does have a keyway in it. So you can see... The key locates um, the flywheel, and then the taper is really what holds it on there. Um, but So here's your stator. I'm going to pull these wires out, and then I'm going to go get my uh, multimeter, and I'll run through the testing with you guys. Okay, so I have the uh, stator here 
on the workbench and I wanted to kind of show you guys um, the testing real fast just so you're hundred percent positive this is it because this component in some cases can cost as much as the whole <laughs> what you spend on the outboard so um, you want to put your meter in the ohm scale because you're going to be measuring resistance um, see if I can set us up here um, so if you go yellow to yellow let's see yellow to yellow hopefully I can get a connection with working with one hand there you get about 1.3 1.4 ohms so that's good um, and the real what's wrong with this one here and what is what usually will will fail you take uh, this wire that goes to the power pack this one happens to be brown um, you're gonna go from the brown wire to this is the ground um, the ground wire and we've got see if you can uh, if I can grab my camera but it's open so it's um, there's an open in the circuit usually that's I think they're looking for like 500 to 800 or let's see here what did that thing say yeah OEM is about four to six hundred ohms so we're definitely uh, not in that range anymore but uh, so that's just the, the quick troubleshooting guide and then um, it, like I said earlier it is a good idea to uh, replace that um, voltage regulator or voltage rectifier when you do this just because they're cheap and that could have been your you know what what cooked this so all right well I found this company CDI um, and actually through Amazon um, and it's I think this was right around 160 but it's brand new you know all new wires you don't have to worry about it rotting out wires and pretty, pretty much all these wires are kind of crispy uh, on these older units so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, swap this in and uh, voltage regulator as well to replace the one that I uh, showed you guys earlier that had the uh, the frayed wires there so here's the the new piece so I'm gonna swap those in and then uh, we'll do run through a couple more checks and uh, show you guys how it's going Another good thing to do is uh, inside your flywheel, these are all magnets, um, as you can see. So uh, clean that off. Um, you'd probably just run just a real light coat of, uh, or light scuffing with scotch brite or something like that, and that should clean that right up for you. Okay, I got all my wiring uh, connected here, just following uh, the diagram that was on there. If you don't have that, you know, just snap a picture before you disassemble or you can get online. There's a lot of good resources um, for these older motors. So I got the new stator uh, bolted in there. Um, and the grounding location was a little different. The old one was down in this bolt. The new one is right up top here. Um, and then the uh, voltage rectifier, I've got that mounted. Um, and they do say it's a good idea to replace these or at least test them um, if you ever replace that because that's a uh, you know number one well maybe not the number one but it is a leading cause of failure for those staters and it's just a good idea to replace uh, them as pairs too so okay um, then you just throw your flywheel back on make sure you line up your key with the shaft um, this nuts an inch and five sixteenths in case you were wondering um, snug that down and then uh, you can button up 
all the covers and everything and then we're going to go through it on the garden hose and uh, go for a little test run here. Okay, I got the uh, hose hooked up here and uh, everything's buttoned up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give it a test start here and see what we got. Also a good thing too to check your uh, battery voltage because you put in that new voltage uh, rectifier so make sure you're in a good charging range and that looks that looks pretty darn good okay so when you're uh, when you're doing your test run you want to make sure you had uh, spark it you know both your cylinders or however many cylinders uh, the engine you're working on so you can use that uh, inline spark checker again or like a non-contact spark checker that's what I did but um, yep, everything uh, worked out here, so I'm gonna just tidy up some of these with some wire ties Try to keep them off the engine the best you can so they don't wear through with vibration um, And heat and everything so just uh, button those up keep them nice and tight away from those sources and uh, get yourself back uh, Back on the water here